we take the time to hear the stories of reform on the Russ Belleville Show's Cannabis Community Chat. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's 30 after the hour, and this segment's brought to you by our, by our friends at Wood Pipes Smoke Shop and Speakeasy. You can find out more from them through email, woodpipes at yahoo.com. Big supporters of us, big supporters of Brave Michaela. Give them your business, Wood Pipes. Wood Pipes Smoke Shop and Speak Easy. Now, uh, welcome back to the show, and we've got Wiz Coleco in the house. Aloha, just, aloha, aloha. It's a beautiful day. It is a gorgeous day here in Portland, man. I mean, after spending so much time in California, i got to tell you, I have to have the sunshine. So. Yeah, it, it's, it's gotten uh, 2.7 times more IRE in this room. Yes, 2.7, because yes. I'm so short, you know. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it's not average. Three times. Yes. Could have been three times. But, but it's 2.7. Had to knock off .3. There you go. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. So you went on the road. Since you were last year, here on the Russ Belleville show. Yeah. And you're still in the credits, by the way. Oh, awesome. We haven't yeah. got the new roll up yet. Good Lord. <laughs> I think, um, and the last time I was on, I just popped in with Ganja John for a show. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think, maybe in January. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. since then, been you've been Mr. Road Warrior. I have. Tell uh, people about your road war experiences. Well, basically, like I was uh, saying a little bit earlier, I went back to work at Taco Bell. And while I was doing that, I was hating my life and thinking about how could I possibly stop rolling burritos for the rest of my life and do something else. And, uh, you know, I'd been knowing that the green was going to be coming up on a tour here um, just a couple weeks ago in March, March uh, 1st through the 3rd. They're going to be playing three shows in Washington. And usually they swing through Portland, but they weren't having a show this time around. So I was just had been planning for months to go drive up, meet them up in Washington, hang out for the weekend. It was the only thing that made going to work worth it every day. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was able to get up there to Spokane on uh, March 1st, met up with the guys actually on whatever, February 28th before their show, hung, hung out in like Kennewick, Washington, uh, you know, on their, on their off day, did some laundry, did some bowling and stuff. Uh, and then uh, they played their show in Spokane the next night. They had Tacoma and then Bellingham all those three nights. And then we were at the Tacoma show. JP, who's uh, my buddy, he's a guitarist from the Green, was like, why don't you just come with us to L.A.? Like, they had like another week and a half, two weeks left of their tour. It's like, why don't you just come with us? I was like, uh, you know. I guess I don't have anything else going on. I just quit my job at Taco Bell because of what I was trying to do. And for those of you don't, that don't know what I've uh, been working on is uh, trying to start a legalization campaign basically in Hawaii. We've all heard about the polls doing really well out there, about the legislature working, trying to get some bills through. But, you know, really, Hawaii's at a point right now where they just need organization to get the public support turned into political support so they can actually get something done. So I've been planning on trying to move out there and get a legalization campaign started. I've been talking to a lot of these guys who are involved in the reggae scene out there there who are interested in getting involved and helping out the cause so uh, I'm trying to start a crowdfunding campaign here soon called legalize high legalize hi.com.org I'm um, basically going to make T-shirts that say Legalize High on them, A New Day in Hawaii, nay. And uh, those will go to fund a marijuana campaign where we'll be able to purchase radio, television, and billboard ads. Basically the same idea as what uh, me and my buddy Sam did with Oregonians uh, for Law Reform here for the Measure 80 campaign. So we basically wanted to do that in Hawaii. So I, I quit my job so that I could focus on that. And then I was able to go up and meet the guys up there for the Washington shows. And then they offered for me to go on down to L.A. So, like I said, I quit my job. I was like, yeah, I'll go with you. I uh, drove um, back here to Portland from Tacoma, dropped off my car, packed all of the rest of the remaining clean clothes I had into a suitcase, met him up at Bamboo Grove, which is my favorite Hawaiian uh, Hawaiian food spot here in Portland where my sister works. Hey, uh, big shout out to Bamboo Grove, advertise with us. Yeah, shoot, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I would definitely be talking to them. Bamboo Grove's uh, awesome here in uh, Portland. So we went there, we had a big meal, you know, all whatever, 12 of us, M Mao down there, and then Headed off down I-5 to their next show, which was in Humboldt, Arcata, California. Oh, my. At a Humboldt Brews, home of Humboldt State. Uh, that was an awesome show. It was like an old venue, like owned by old hippies, old deadheads and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they had really good, like really good equipment and stuff. Uh, that was a great show. Then we were down in Santa Barbara the next night. Uh, then it was two nights in Hermosa Beach, Friday and Saturday night. Both nights were sold out. And then they they finished the tour in um, San Juan Capistrano at this place called Coach House, which is like a pretty legendary place. The the walls and the entire um, venue is lined with pictures of famous people who had gotten their starts there. And one of my favorite pictures is uh, one of Ziggy Marley before he had dreads. So, I mean, if you can think about how long Ziggy Marley's dreads are sure. down to his, like, back of his kneecaps now, it's crazy to think that 
he was playing there before he ever yeah, had dreads. We, we looked at that picture. It yeah, was pretty shocking. It was pretty awesome. So the Green managed to sell out that show as well. It was just an amazing, crazy time. Like, like I've been telling everybody, it was the time of my life. Could not have possibly expected to have had that much fun, considering, like I said, it was only going to be a weekend little journey, and it ended up being like a two-week excursion. So, wow. Yeah, definitely got to cover a lot of ground. Washington, Oregon, California. Got to hang out with my favorite band. You know what I mean? And um, <laughs> also found a way to get back to Hawaii a little quicker. So. Yeah, that's the next step on this. And, and yeah. before we get to the Hawaii stuff, I just need to know, uh, from the on, on the scale from lead singer to bus driver, where does Wiz Coleco fit in the groupie scale? <laughs> and the groupie scale. Yeah, I, where, where did, I, where, I, I got to tell you that their bus to... their bus driver is a good looking dude. All right? Oh, okay. okay. And he also and he also had to double. He might his, skew the average. He, he also had to double his merch guy this time around, so he got a little more FaceTime. Okay. Okay. But no, I'm just kidding. All the guys, they all had a they all had girlfriends this time around. So really, oh. there were plenty of groupies it was around. All for Wiz Coleco. It was all for Wiz Coleco, but all for not because. I took my time. I was just hanging back, enjoying the ride. You know what I mean? Really, not trying to insert myself in too many situations. Oh, really, yeah, just... oh, that insert. Oh, huh, right. okay, baby, bad, bad choice of words. <laughs> Anyways, I was really not trying to, you know, uh, you know, get in anybody's hair. So I was really just laying back and watching. I mean, this first two experience. I'm not trying to be a pain in the ass. You know what I mean? So. We were just enjoying, knowing that uh, there might be another opportunity. Uh, there are certainly moments that led me to believe that this will not be the first time. So oh, yeah. So that, Hawaii. That's Hawaii. the next step. And, and, and these guys in this group... Uh, are are helping you get there? Is that how this works? Um, well, they're you know they're just obviously they have a lot of connections and they're just willing to help throw their support behind a legalization effort. You know, obviously they've been really friendly to me every time they've come to town. They know that I'm all about the marijuana legalization. Obviously, reggae as a community lends itself to you know marijuana legalization because a lot of their demographics smoke pot. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. basic. This uh, basic just in: ideas. people who like reggae smoke pot. Yeah, back to you. Well, may, may smoke pot. <laughs> may smoke pot. And so you know um, they. They basically have just said, if, if you're coming out here, we're definitely willing to get behind whatever it is that you want to do. And, you know, they've definitely offered up help in other ways. You know, I don't want to go out and put anybody, you know, on the spot or anything. But they're mm. definitely got a lot of things lined up. Looks that we can definitely um, make some big waves over there in Hawaii once they get over there. So I'm looking to possibly get there as late as uh, April 30th. So I'm about, wow. a, I'm about a month away from uh from moving just now, putting I've together seen, the final uh, things you know Pam Lichty out there with drug policy Hawaii they right. got some new group that's uh start I think there was two new activism groups that I saw in news co that we covered maybe a month or so right, ago. and I know there's a there's a medical marijuana group out there as that well that it. she one works was with medical one was a uh, coalition of Hawaii or something like that um yeah there's a couple of organizations that do a really good job like they're on the ground working at the legislature organizing testimonies getting people to come in there and you know really just uh work with the legislators on the ins and outs of the bills, you know what I mean? Sure. So really what I see what needs to happen out there now is just being able to drum up the public support. You have Pam Lichty and all of these awesome activists being able to get the the political stuff done. Mm -hmm. I don't see that being the problem. I see the problem being driving the public support to where you, you're really holding the politicians' feet to the fire. Because, you know, in Colorado and Oregon and Washington, you have these initiatives. So the voters were able to write a bill that they thought was good and then get enough signatures, and then pass it. In Hawaii, you don't have an initiative process. It's all up to the legislators. So really, it's just about you know basic political psychology. Make them afraid for their job, yeah. right? So it's going there. I see it as really trying to run like a rock-the-vote-style campaign, going there, using the, the tight-knit community of the reggae scene, and really being able to just have a voter registration drive where you go to UH, you go to these high schools, you get all the young people registered to vote because their favorite reggae bands are telling them that this is an issue that they need to get involved in. You know what I mean? And we get them registered to vote, and then we start flooding the Capitol switchboards. You know what I mean? We have phone banking days, we have letter writing campaigns, we have rallies, we have all sorts of events, and really just make it a popular and cool, hip you know, campaign that people really want to get on board with. Because I see, you know, Hawaii being such a small place that if we're able to do that, there's no way that after this year, having bills go through the legislature and fail, 2014, I just don't see the legislature being able to pass it up when you have Washington and Colorado having the first legal weed being sold. I mean, weed is legal in those states, but by 2014 session, you're going to have the rules and the regulations adopted in Washington and have the first legal money actually flowing through the states. And I think that's going to put a little extra a little extra onus on legislators to start acting. Because right now it's one thing to say, oh, you know, the voters want legalization. But it's another thing to see the money rolling in when you're not seeing money roll in. So I think yeah. that, you know, getting out there in the next month, building things up through the, through the summer, 
and then leading up to the fall and really hitting them hard before December when they go back into the in session in January that we could really build up some really good momentum. So You know, I'm thinking that as marijuana becomes legalized across the United States, the you know, uh, one of the things we always say, marijuana is fungible, right? You know, it, it can't tell one from the other. Right. Uh, what's going to differentiate marijuana in this increasingly competitive market is a quality weed. Well, we know Hawaii grows quality weed. You know, the Pacific Northwest grows quality weed. Humboldt grows quality weed. BC grows quality weed. It's it's everywhere, really, if you just find the right grower. Sure. So what what's going to differentiate it then is branding, and I think Hawaii stands poised to just reap the benefits from. I mean, just Maui Wowie right off the bat. Sure. The, 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 the just bat. all the tropical blends. Yeah, for sure. exactly. So uh, I see that as being you know the the economics of this being really really big for Hawaii. So uh, you'll be out there by May. Yep, I'll be out there by May. Um, and then, you know, I got more traveling. I'm hopefully trying to do um, May 24th, 25th, 26th is the Cali Roots Festival. It's becoming a really big, popular um, reggae festival down there in California. It's only in its third year, but it's got slightly stupid headlining along with a lot of uh, other big artists who uh, the who's who will be there. So I'll be planning on traveling out to that. I got a friend getting married in Vegas on May 28th, so trying to go out to the Cali Roots Festival then possibly rent a car or fly to Vegas for my buddy's wedding. Mm, and then I'm going to check out a little Carlos Santana out there while I'm out there <sighs> since he's doing his little residency at the House of Blues. Going to check Very that cool. out. And then, yeah, just going to be putting in work over there, trying to, to get the, the foundation laid so that next year we can really hit it hard out there in Hawaii. Because I, uh, I think it's definitely high. ready. Legalize high. Legalizehigh.com. It's nothing up yet, though. There's nothing up yet. We have just bought the domains. Um, we've been working on an indie, me and my buddy Sam have been working on an Indiegogo campaign, Indiegogo.com, which is basically another platform, much like Kickstarter, where you can set up your own campaign, set up a goal, and you can have a tiered incentive system where you give people perks. So, like, if you give $10, you might get a postcard. If you give $20, you might get a T-shirt, you know what I mean, so on and so forth. Uh, so we've been putting that together. I had to, you know, take a break on it for about a month and a half because mm -hmm. things got a little wild for me. Sure, sure. Uh, but now that things are calming down and I'm looking to do the move, we're going to be getting back on top of that. Just going to be really trying to get there and then lay the groundwork. So hopefully I'll be back on um, on the show, you know, hopefully soon, talking about our Indiegogo campaign for Legalize High so that we can help crowdfund our way to a, a solid legalization campaign effort there in Hawaii and really get all of the, the, the media that we need, you know, radio, television, and billboard ads so we can make it happen. And even more than that, the possibility of a Hawaiian podcast. Yeah, so I might be re revamping, not really the Irie Island Hour, going to probably just make a legalized high podcast if I can, yeah. um, really just to promote the campaign out there to keep people up to date with what's going on and, you know, to have um, some friends uh, that are in the reggae community stop in and, and talk a little bit about legalization. So uh, I've been thinking about that, definitely going to try to piece that together. I mean, I have plenty of equipment and uh, looks like now I'm going to have plenty of musically in inclined, inclined friends, friends over there. Yeah. So we will definitely try to put something together. You could have a house band. I've, uh, that would be awesome. I'm Wiz Coleco, and this is my house band, the the High, or whatever. We'll see what's up, man. Just might happen. Just <laughs> might be able to so find cool. myself a house band. I'm so looking forward. I'm so glad for all these great things that are happening for you, Coleco, because uh, couldn't happen to a better guy. You've been working hard at it, and I've always said that, like you know, if you if you prepare for the stuff and you believe in it and you put yourself in the places where opportunities can happen, they will, and they Absolutely. did. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, obviously, you've given me one of the biggest opportunities of all here, and I appreciate it. And I've tried to run with it as much as I can, and I. Certainly continue to do so. Absolutely. Hey, when we come back, we're going to take time for a radical rant, talking out, calling out the Democratic senators in the Western states on their marijuana stands. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Rust Belt of the show. You're tuned into the Rust Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Yeah.